Today I decided that I wanted to film a video responding to the comments on my selective mutism video. I made that video definitely over a year ago explaining what it is, how it links to me, so like I explained my story and everything like that and that video has gone down so well. It's got currently 34,000 views and 710 likes so that video did go down really well and it's also got 455 comments on it i did do um i have done videos since that video i did one with my mum where i talked about selective mutism from a mother's perspective so how she felt about the situation and her views on it i've also done a video um responding to the comments on my selective mutism video so that's what this video is this is part two to that video so i'll link down all the videos that i've done about selective mutism in the description if you want to go and watch them first or whatever but i'll leave the definition of selective mutism on the screen now just so that you kind of understand what it is before we get into this video the reason why i wanted to do this is because it's something I am very passionate about which is why I want to talk about it on my channel. It's also something that obviously affected like the majority of my life so far and it's something that I think if that I can help other people with because I've got so many comments, loads of people saying like thank you so much for making this video and all that kind of thing and I just really want to make some more and I think that responding to the comments on those videos is not just me reading the comments and like responding to them it's basically me being able to talk about it and answer questions it's almost a bit like a q a because people do ask me questions i i am not able to reply to all of the comments on there i do want to but i haven't been able to because sometimes it doesn't i don't get notified when a comment comes on there but anyway by the way i'm not in my usual background my autumn background because i just didn't want to film this video with an autumn background i don't think it's you know related to autumn or anything so i just thought i'm gonna stay in my mum's room but yeah so i have done this video so i'm gonna try and pick some comments i haven't responded to there is a lot of them so i could literally make this video about six or seven times over or more so i'm just gonna try and find some and i'm gonna put my laptop on the side if you've suffered from selective mutism as well and that's why you're subscribed because I know that some people are subscribed for like that reason or from that video um, then just if you want me to answer any questions or whatever then just comment them down below because all I can talk about is it based on my experience I, I don't really know that much about like I know a lot about it because I did an EPQ on selective mutism and everything like that so I've done a lot of research into it and I really do quite understand it now but it is definitely from my perspective as well. Okay, some of these comments I'm just gonna read and I'm not gonna respond to too much because, you know, sometimes I just want to kind of get the comments in a video, but some of them I will talk to at length. So I won't say who's like written these or whatever, but if you do wanna know for whatever reason, just look on that video. Um, someone said, I'm 13 and I've had it since the age of four and still have it now. I only talk to my mom, brothers and Nana and three friends everyone else I can't talk to. That is the thing with selective mutism. I think some people don't understand the fact that it is selective. So it's not a choice, but it basically means that it's, it's not just the fact that somebody that suffers from selective mutism can't talk to anybody. They can't talk to some people, but they can talk to other people. And it's not their choice. It's it's something mentally that's stopping them and I was comfortable talking obviously to well not obviously I was comfortable talking to my mum my dad my brother my grandparents and that was about it really and maybe a couple of friends it did take me quite a long time to make friends and it does when you suffer from selective mutism but you know you can still make friends even when you do but it is just a little bit more difficult obviously uh, the situations that I really struggled with and the people that I struggled to talk with is people that I hadn't met before or people in a shop or say we went round to a family friend's, a friend of the family's house or something and I do kind of know them but not very well. I would really, really struggle. They'd say hello to me and I wouldn't be able to respond back. So I think the misconception there is that some people think, well, how come you, you say you've got that but you were able to talk to this person or whatever? It's very situational. And somebody actually replied to their comment saying, I think it's just little steps. Over time, 
you learn to take bigger risks. However, you were always in charge of the situation. They're talking about me, by the way, because I'd also replied and you weren't forced into it. That's kind of how it happened to me. So with selective mutism, like I said in that video, for me, being forced into a situation is the absolute worst thing for anybody that suffers from mental health issues. If you feel the pressure of somebody else trying to push you into a situation that you're not comfortable with, that's just not gonna happen and you're gonna feel so panicked and you know, you might even have a panic attack. I didn't ever, but some people could based on that situation. When you have selective mutism, it's not like you are deciding not to do these things. It is a physical barrier. It is not a choice. And I'm gonna get into that uh, with another comment that was actually not, I didn't really like the comment that we're gonna go into. But yeah, it's all about taking those little steps, pushing yourself just slightly over the boundary, and then you can keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that until you reach the top. Never, ever, ever just force yourself into the deep end. A lot of people in life are like, you need to push yourself, you need to do this, you need to do that. Yet, yeah, some people can do that, and that's absolutely fine because they're pushing their self to their limits to where they know they can get to. Me, pushing myself, I know what is pushing myself. Even going to uni was pushing myself, and I know my limits, and I know what will benefit me, and I always say in life that whatever happens, as long as I'm happy, that's okay. As long as I don't force myself to do anything that I'm not comfortable with, or as long as nobody else forces me, then I'll be okay, because I don't want to have bad memories. Obviously, now looking back in my childhood, I have bad memories of the way I felt, things that, situations that I was put in, things like that. I don't want that for any of these years that I'm living in now. So I'm just gonna try and make the most out of what I have and just kind of push myself very gently within my limits. Okay, um, someone said, when I'm at home, I'm really loud and have no problem talking, but as soon as I go to a store or school or something, my voice goes down to a whisper and I hate it when the situation calls for me to talk louder. I've tried, but I just can't. And whenever someone at school talks to me, I just nod my head and answer in the shortest way possible when I have to. I'd love to talk to them, but I just feel that I can't. But I think I've gotten slightly better because I can't talk to random strangers and teachers. But after I run the conversation through my head over and over until, I, until what I said sounds dumb, I've been trying to stop doing it, but usually don't. I've been trying to stop doing it, but I usually don't have any distractions. And then they said, whoops, just realized how long this has gotten. I'm going to stop before it gets any longer. So I'm gonna kind of dissect their comment. I'm not gonna go through read too many comments because I am gonna do this video like part three, part four, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> like they said, when they're at home, they're loud, but when they go out, they start whispering. That was the same for me because when I was out and about and I was meeting people and things like that and I wasn't comfortable enough to talk and I couldn't talk in those situations, when I came home, I felt so like a build up of kind of anger. It, it was anger because I was struggling inside. Sorry, I'm gonna have to move the camera because my legs hurt. Sorry, my legs were hurting, I had to sit down. Um, it's basically when I would come home from school or well, mainly school, because I hadn't been talking throughout the day. And can you imagine not talking throughout a whole day, feeling so anxious throughout the day, feeling like it's an absolute chore to get through every single minute. It honestly, trust me, it isn't fun. And then when you get home and you're comfortable, surrounded by the people that you're comfortable with, and you've got all of that feelings built up inside, you just get let it out. So I was quite loud. I was quite an angry person. I would say that I did have certain anger issues when I was younger because I would get quite angry quite easily at things. But I know for a fact now that if somebody has anger problems, especially when they're a child, it's for a reason. It isn't because they're just an angry person. There is something in their life that is making them feel down or sad or that's stressing them out and they're trying to express how they're feeling through anger because they don't want to say it or maybe they can't say what's wrong. So that's what I think. Um, they also said that they just nod their head when someone talks to them and they feel like they can't talk. That is what I used to do is if somebody t spoke to me and it was a yes or no answer, I would nod or shake my head and that was it. I wouldn't even be able to say yes or no. 
or I would just mumble something that wouldn't make any sense. Or if somebody asked me a question that required a, like a long answer, I would just sort of shrug my shoulders or maybe laugh a bit. Like I'd be like, I don't know, I'd just do a weird laugh thing. And that's very common with people that suffer from selective mutism is kind of like a little nervous laughter in response to something. And I still have that nervous laugh now in uncomfortable situations and I think that stems from my selective mutism is that when I'm put under an uncomfortable situation um, I will kind of laugh but it's not because I'm laughing because it's funny I will laugh because it's almost like a defense mechanism it's like a, a response because I don't know how to react sort of thing it's hard to explain and she said that when she talks to random strangers after talking to the stranger, she said she runs the conversation through her head over and over again afterwards. That is exactly what I used to do. If I ever had a conversation with somebody, and what I mean by conversation is just saying something, like saying a, a, a word, a few words, a sentence, whatever, I just happen to say something. After that, I would go over and over and over and convince myself that I sound, my voice is weird, that what I said is stupid. I think of different things I could have said and I beat myself up about every single little detail of that and I really do overthink it. And that is what makes you then even worse because that's what's making you think, I don't want to do that again. I best off just not say anything. And with selective mutism people, they have a fear of saying things wrong. So they have a fear of actually saying a certain word wrong or, you know, when you answer the register saying, you know, yes sir or whatever, saying that wrong. And because you play the situation over and over and over and over in your head, when it actually does come to that situation, you do sometimes say it wrong. And that doesn't make it, because you think, you know, oh, it's all in your head. But actually, when the words come out, they do sometimes come out wrong as well, which doesn't help at all. So it really is quite tricky to kind of help somebody that thinks that way about themselves. Now I'm very confident. I accept who I am. I don't, you know, I don't judge other people because I know that I don't want to be judged myself and I just like to talk and talk and talk now. So thank God, that's all I'm gonna say. Someone else commented saying, thank you for talking about this challenge in your life and it gives a lot of hope to others. Also, there's a very informative website I found called socialanxiety.com. So I only wanted to mention that comment because I'm gonna leave that down in the description um, if you wanna go and check that out um, for whatever reason, just in case. Somebody else has said, the only people I can talk to is my mum, my big brother and a few close friends. Anytime I try to talk to someone else, my throat closes up and it's hard to breathe. My dad's an alcoholic and my parents have broken up. My mum got married to another man and they've been together for a few years. Turns out he's an alcoholic too and when he's drunk he gets abusive. They did make a promise to never drink again but I still don't trust him or feel safe around him. Five years ago my brother got leukaemia and his legs got amputated. He has pros he has prosthesis now and is recovering, but every night I'm scared because anything might happen. My stepdad might drink and start doing something to my mum or something might happen to my brother. I guess it's paranoia. I do go to a therapist, but my mum comes with me, so I whisper something in her ear and she explains it to the therapist, but I don't feel like I can say anything I want to say there because my mum's there. I can't even write on paper to communicate to someone. I'd rather force a word or two. So this is quite obviously a, a very detailed comment and you might be thinking, well, why are you talking about somebody else's life in your video? They have put that comment in the comments for anybody to read and I want to include it in a video because it helps me to explain how selective mutism can be caused and how it can get worsened. Sometimes it can be hereditary and in my case I think that's what has happened with me because my dad did have similar experiences when he was a child and you know throughout his life but it can be caused from abuse, mental, physical abuse, it can be caused um, from traumas that might happen, events in your life, um, people around you and with this person obviously they you know will care about their family members and all the all these things are happening the pet um 
all these things that have happened in their life and everything just builds up it's kind of almost like such a worry in their life and it can impact on someone's mental health massively when things like this are going on obviously this person will be in constant fear and constant worry about the people around her because she wants them to be okay and that will impact on the way that she is in day-to-day -day life having that subconscious feeling of just constant anxiety will impact the way that she is and she also said that um she doesn't feel like she can say anything to the therapist because her mum's there and that is what i want to talk about as well because i think nowadays and what helped me to recover is that i felt so much better sort of as the years went on to talk to people I've never met before in my life on my own and if I sort of bumped into somebody in the street and I didn't know who they was then and they started talking to me I would be fine because they don't know me they don't know my personality don't know anything about me what you can do or what I could do is I could completely different and they would not have a clue they wouldn't think oh why is Georgie acting differently they they wouldn't because they wouldn't because they don't know me so I could put on any kind of persona that I wanted I could have an American accent or whatever so what I would do is just try and make myself come across as confident as possible and as chatty as possible you know within reason just kind of pushing myself that little bit more and they would be none the wiser and then, for example, if they met me again and again and again, so it depends on the, on the situation, obviously, they would think, oh, she's just a confident person. Because from day one, that is what I portrayed myself as and that is what I've been keeping up with. Personality is not something that you are necessarily born with. It's something that develops as you get older and older and older and your personality can change. In my instinct, thank God it did because I was very with withdrawn. I think your personality or the way you feel impacts the way that you are. And if you can master how to feel so much better in yourself, then the way that you act around other people is a lot different. And yeah, you can, effectively, you can pretend you're confident and make it there eventually. It's a slow process, but trust me, I did that and that's what got me to recovery. Hi, I'm back up here again. I just, my knees got a little bit better. Um, someone else commented, this was really interesting. I've known someone with this before and it's interesting to hear your perspective on it. And I just wanted to talk about that because obviously it is different for everybody. This is my perspective on the situation. This is my story. It is gonna be different for everybody. The causes of their selective mutism will be different to mine. The way that they deal with it is different to mine. You know, I didn't get professional help. Other people would have done. And it's just, you know, that kind of thing. So it's very different for every single person um, that has SM. Um, somebody commented, when people say hello to me, I either wave or whisper it because I physically can't speak louder and somebody replied to their comment saying I thought I was the only one that did this and I hate it when I'm told to speak louder but I just can't basically it's a fear of your own voice you fear fear that you're gonna say something wrong you fear that you you, you know that you don't like your own voice a lot of people that suffer from this hate their own voice even though it sounds absolutely fine it's all in your head they hate their own voice and they just think that if they say hello back, then it's gonna come out weird or it's gonna sound weird. So whispering means that their voice isn't really coming out, it's just a whisper. And if somebody tells them to speak louder, that is then sort of all the attention on that person that suffers from SM. And if you see a shy person and they're talking quietly, and they're, t and you know, and they're really struggling and you can see that they're just sort of whispering, never ever ever tell them to talk louder never ever ever tell them to do something that will push them out of their comfort zone because it's nothing to do with you it's not your life to mess with it's theirs so it's for them to deal with and all you can do if you really want to help them is just listen to them and support them and just and try and have a little bit more of an understanding of what they're actually feeling because trust me it's not as simple as speak louder 
I'm not going to read too many more, but I am going to do a part three at some point, probably soon, because I do quite like doing these. Um, somebody said, I learned I was autistic last year. I really never looked into this, but I think I'm experiencing it now. I can't talk to my psychiatrist. Maybe that's what's causing this. And all I'm going to say is that selective mutism can be linked to other things like autism, Asperger's, OCD, things like that. A lot of the symptoms are very similar. And when I did my research for my EPQ on SM, it did, there was a lot of information saying that often the conditions can get confused between each other because the symptoms are so kind of related often um, and you could, can, it can be difficult to define you into, you know, the different categories. So you definitely need to look into all the different conditions so that you know what you fit into if you think that that's something that you are. Um, someone said, thank you for uploading this. I never really knew that other people have this condition. I always thought that I was the only one. Thank you for spreading awareness. Now I know I'm not alone. I, growing up, never realised that this was a thing. I didn't know that I had a condition. I never thought, I thought that was just me. I thought that was my personality and that I would always feel like that. As soon as you know that that something is wrong with you, you can start to recover. Because it's not about, oh, I have to learn to live with this. It's about learning to deal with how to recover and learning to get through every single life to just make yourself that little bit better and even now there's still situations that i really struggle with and there's still situations that i feel uncomfortable in but that i've learned how to deal with that and i've learned how to just gently push myself in life i am the only one in control of myself i feel like now I'm quite a strong person in the sense that I don't like to do what people tell me to do if I don't want to. Obviously that sounds quite obnoxious and it sounds, I don't know, selfish or whatever, but it stems back from the fact that I don't want to feel pressure. I hate the feeling of pressure. It reminds me of the way I used to feel when I was younger. Even in simple little situations, I absolutely hate it because it's all about me doing things for myself. I feel quite independent or I feel like I want to be quite independent because I don't want to have to rely on other people in life, you know, in my future. Um, I want to be able to just do things for myself and and I think that's what, what I am now. I would say I'm quite a strong-minded person in the fact that I, you know, will always do things when I want to do them, not when somebody else wants me to do them. Obviously, you know, the situations are different. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll just read a couple more. These are so addictive to read because I just have so much to say. Um, okay, um, another person said, amazing. I work with children with SM and it is in my life mission for people to know what it is. Well done. Thank you so much. I'm going to post this on my Facebook page. So, I personally would love to work with people with selective mutism because I understand a lot of people that work with children that suffer from mental health issues actually haven't suffered from that themselves. So I just can't understand how they can, you know, work with a child if they don't understand and or if they haven't experienced it because I truly believe that if you haven't experienced it, you don't understand it and you just don't understand that feeling inside that barrier so i would love to work with children especially with selective mutism because i understand and i would never push a child to do something they wouldn't want to do and i would be able to talk to them about my experiences and my feelings and they might be able to relate to it and i would love to do that so another person said my friend has selective mutism so it's quite good that um for people to you know have be able to support their friend and understand what their friend has. So if your friend's got selective mutism, just look into it and try and have a little bit more understanding. Um, someone said, this is the final question I will answer. They said, do you have difficulty with concentration? When I was younger, I found it so difficult to concentrate on the work that I was doing because I was in constant fear and anxiety that somebody was gonna come up to me ask me things or whatever if the teacher was going to read a book in front of the class and she was like okay I'm going to read this out and then I'm going to ask you questions on it I couldn't do it I couldn't do it because I would be constantly thinking don't ask me don't ask me don't ask me I won't be able to say it I won't be able to think of an answer I won't be able to talk and I won't be able to listen I would not be able to process a single word that she says and it would not be able to go into my head at all and then yep yeah, she would ask me because she as a teacher would think Georgie is a shy student let's get her out of her shell no 
that does not do it and that does not work and that is why teachers need to understand just that little bit more that picking out a child that has a mental health issue in front of the rest of the class is not bringing them out of their comfort zone at all that is putting them out of their comfort zone and throwing them into a, a swimming pool until they get to the bottom that is what that is doing and it damages their mental health because I know it does because I've been there time and time again um, so yes I did have difficulty with concentration, I found it difficult to read books, I would read a book and not know what I've read, even at home I'd read a book and be like I've no idea what I've just read, so I'd have to read the same paragraph over and over again because it's, it's almost like you can't relax, everything's just going on in your head, you've got all of these sort of anxious thoughts that you can't actually just read something and that, that is what it's all about, so I always struggle to read um, when I was younger, like to process the information, but now I'm absolutely fine, so I could only be grateful for that. So I am gonna leave it there. I am gonna do a part three to this because there's so many comments. I, I think I could actually do, I would say about 20, 20 of these parts. So I am gonna do a part three to this very soon because I feel so passionately about this subject. If you've got any questions, comment them down below. Obviously, you know, check out the links down below of the other videos I've done if you wanna hear more about them or whatever, then, you know, you can do. And check out that website that that person kind of um told us about if you want to just have a little look on it um so thanks for watching anyway if you've made it to the end and i would like it if you could subscribe because i do make a lot of videos like this and i will be making some more videos like this because this is my kind of passion in my life at the minute so yeah so yeah i'll probably see you in my next video bye